love a good plan. When I was younger, I fought pretty hard to keep things from going off my patently brilliant plans. But as I've gotten older, I've gotten much wiser to the value of a good plan when things go awry. With a good plan, I can figure out what needs to shift around when the world changes. However, I did not plan for a pandemic. All my plans for this year have gotten blown up. Once I accepted that those were dust, all my plans of what I would accomplish during the pandemic have been blown up. To be honest, I'm a little annoyed that my plans haven't worked out, and there's a part of me that's annoyed with God when I see how many people's plans, and more than that, whole lives, have been thrown into chaos because of this pandemic. The Israelites had a plan. They would let the prophets guide the people to pick the right family to be the rulers. They would wisely guide the people to prosperity. Their faith would keep them on a virtuous high road, which would keep them from being conquered by other countries. They would trust in God, and the covenant would keep them safe. It was a good plan. Except that David committed adultery, which led to civil war with his sons. And then David's son Solomon worshipped other gods, which caused more problems. Then Solomon's son Rehoboam was a tyrant. The nation split, with the northern part deciding that they were going to find another family to be the rulers. So in the early part of the book of Isaiah, which is where today's reading comes from, the political storm clouds are gathering over the southern part of Israel. Disaster has not struck yet, but Isaiah is convinced that Israel is going to get pulled into war if the current ruler doesn't come up with a better plan than choosing between one of two bad allies. Isaiah is arguing that relying on God is the way to go much better to stay out of the political fight brewing between a world superpower and the two small local states who want to rebel. The king dithers. And Isaiah says that God will send a sign. A baby won't even grow up into a man before the whole problem disappears. If the king will just rely on God rather than on earthly allies. But that doesn't feel faithful to the king. You should have a plan you can work towards. You shouldn't put God to the test. And that means having earthly allies. The king and Isaiah both want Israel to be at peace. It's just that the king wants to get there by joining with allies to be so militarily powerful that no enemy will win a war against them. No enemy will be even tempted to go into battle with them. We are all descendants of the war to end all wars and the wars that came after that. We all know how the king's plan turns out. But we don't know how God's plan turns out. And that is what Isaiah is telling the king and the rest of us. For humans wanting an end to war, the solution cannot possibly be that the warrior's boots need to be burned, that their battle gear needs to go up in flames. And yet God's plan includes that the rod of oppression will be broken, not transferred from one hand to another. God's plan is wonderful, mighty, everlasting, and centered around a baby, which makes no sense to our way of thinking, since babies are the most vulnerable and the most dependent. And there it is. God has a plan. And it's so much bigger and so completely different from anything we could come up with. We may not understand all the parts of it. We may not understand any of the parts of it. But that doesn't make the plan wrong or bad or worth getting annoyed with. God is inviting us to be a part of God's plan by loving our neighbor and loving God and accepting that not everything will make sense or even feel good right now. I know many of you recognize this passage from Isaiah. It's usually read on Christmas Eve. But I wanted to pull it away from the passage in Luke that describes Jesus' birth 
so we could see it separately. And this year of having our human plans blown up again and again, it's a clear reminder that we can end up in places we can't imagine with hopes fulfilled we couldn't begin to describe. But we have to follow God's plan. Following God's plan will let us work together to tackle human systems that are failing to provide justice and righteousness. As someone who loves a plan, I know how hard this will be. But after a hard year of all my plans getting broken by reality, I guess I'm ready to try another way. Because I'm ready for the great light in the land of deep darkness. I'm ready for the joy at the harvest. I'm ready for the Prince of Peace. Let's go with God's plan and see what changes. Amen.